good afternoon. It's fun <laughs> when you see certain mistakes in football and you begin to ask questions. How come with all the training you pass through? Well, that's an exceptional uh, occasion right there in that game. I decided to bring that to you uh, to liven up your afternoon. It's a wet afternoon actually here in Lagos. I don't know how it is with you uh, wherever you are. But right now, we're on Sport Matters right here on Super Screen Television 173. And you can get us on our local terrestrial uh, station, uh, UHF, for a five. A splendid afternoon, I would say, and a wonderful sporting week. It was all over the world. The EPL is back. The Ligon is back. The La Liga is also back. And other sporting events like basketball. And the U.S. Open was just here with a brand new champion. Dominic Thiel is his name. And we're taking you through all that and letting you know that back in the home front, uh, we're very settled when it comes to what we really want to do with our football. There are a lot of issues in football uh, right in the country. NNL has been told to name their home ground in Delta State. There is trouble brewing between the Delta State Football Federation and NFF concerning the normalization committee. We shall be checking uh, a call in this afternoon. Uh, the Delta State Football Federation chairman will call us um, in another 15 minutes from now to tell us the current situation of the event as it's happening right there. We'll also let you know what Victor Weber feels about that particular situation. Uh, he's the vice chairman of the Delta State Football Association. And we'll let you know who is the current champion of the US Open. I just told his name. His name is Dominic Tien. We've known that of the female uh, Osaka. We'll also tell you what's happening right there in the EPL. And we have some transfergists. I'm not forgetting. We have some reviews and some very juicy information we'll be bringing to you this afternoon. I still want to laugh based on that video. It's so quite interesting one. My name still remains Prince Will Ovisa, and they call me the Duke. I'm not alone in the house. It's a full house. Um, when you talk about full house, knowledge-wise, I have Francisca Wobudu uh, in here with you. Francisca, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Very good afternoon to our viewers out there. It's always nice to be on set with you. Especially over the weekend, it was full, it was fun packed um, sporting activities. Like you said, EPL was back and we saw a lot of resorts. Um, <laughs> imaginable surprising, resort. surprising results and imaginable um, results as well. Also, at the U.S. Open, that's the tennis. I also I predicted as a ring card to win. I thought I was going to see an offset, but hey, come on, nothing like that happened. Osaka all the way. Then Thumni and Dominic Thiem, I wasn't surprised because he has been consistent over the years, and I just think this is the year for him. So he didn't disappoint. So at the end of the day, he picked up the U.S. Um, Open title for, for the very first time. So congratulations. Congratulations to him. I think this is the first time we are seeing a newly crowned um, Grand Slam um, winner. I was going to uh, come to that. Um, I think we'll get to that segment okay, so that maybe, our viewers yeah. really feel we're taking them through. <laughs> I won't get to that segment. I will take you in. Also right in here with me is Duat. Mark, how are you doing? I'm all right. Thank you very much. It's so beautiful to be here. Um, upset, upset, upset over the weekend. <laughs> It's all right. Thank you. All right. It's all right. I wait to go out upset. A lot of people didn't expect to uh, view or see what happened between Liverpool and Leeds United. We'll give you uh, a clip of that as the program goes on. And we'll also tell you uh, what's really happening in the transfer market. Coach are beginning to demand for players. And uh, Mohamed Salah and Mbappe saying they want to move on. Okay. Let's start from the home front. Like I told you, in 15 minutes' time from now, we shall be taking the call of uh, the chairman of the Delta State Federation. There are a lot of issues that have arisen, and the South-South Zone um, of that particular area has said the standby, uh, the Delta State Football Association um, ground that election will not hold on the 15th, I mean on the 19th of this one, I beg your pardon. Um, Francisca, let me start with you. There are a lot of issues coming up. I remember asking Joel and the so coming on Friday. I told them vividly that they shouldn't really look up to football kicking off very soon, based on the PTF uh, commandment, and they asked me, so what have we all been saying all this while with transfer, transfer I said, that's how it is with us. Um, just over the weekend, the National League clubs were asked to name their home ground. Now, the question I want to ask you is, um, what is the impact of a home ground to a team, and how many home ground does we have for some of these teams? That's the big question, but you know, here, here in Nigeria, we are we are always used to um, um, the home ground. The home ground, if you ask me, always have one one important or a pivotal role it plays um, to a particular team. Not necessarily maybe in terms of winning your games, but 
you know, when you are playing in front of your fans, there is this different atmosphere. So I feel that's the reason why each time um, a club is playing in front of their fans, they do not want to disappoint their fans. So definitely they want to show something for the fact that they are playing in front of their fans. But now, if you're saying, name a particular home ground, like you said, how many home grounds do we have? I keep I kept clamoring on this that we will, we are going to have problem when it comes to post COVID, and that is what we are beginning to have now. Take for instance what happened in every other um, across other leagues. They, they went back to the league with ease. Do you understand? And nobody, it, it wasn't even as if there, were, there was a COVID-19, despite the fact that there were no spectators when it comes to um, the field. Back to Nigeria, I knew this is where we are going to be. Because the truth is, we are not in uniform and we have to be honest with ourselves. I kept hammering on this thing that post-COVID-19 is going to be a huge problem for our league here in the country and this is what is beginning to, um, to, to we are beginning to see and this says that when you refuse to do the, the needful this is what you're definitely going to get what happened during all the pandemic season where people sleeping where the organizers of this league sleeping where, where, where the players sleeping where the management sleeping where the administrators sleeping what was happening during this um, post COVID-19 and now it's not just in even sports um, Prince we are talking across all all ministries and every other thing as regard Nigeria and it's sad that this is happening let's see what will happen how the PTF want to come about it how the Ministry of Sport want to come about it the organizers of this league let's just see what happened but the truth remains that lovers of football especially Nigeria wants to see football back in the field so right. I don't know how they want to get um, to it okay Joel, let me ask you um, let's take Lagos as a peculiar stand Agege and um Teslim Balugu and the Onikon, just concluded the Onikon, are two standard pitches. Um, good enough, we don't have too many clubs in the NNL uh, right in Lagos. But what about states that don't have standardized pitches? How are they going to cope? Because they've been mandated to name a ground as their home ground. To me, <clears throat> I'm going to start with this. Um, coming, coming out to say teams should name the, I mean, their home ground, last week we saw the news came out like they should get ready. I feel the management of the NNL, they just, they, just, they just want to talk, and that's all. They don't have anything to say right now. Because there's no date fixed, the restoration is not on, so what are you talking about home ground? And how many teams have private stadiums? Now, look at Lagos, for example, you see like six, seven teams using Agege Stadium, even home and away ground. So how many teams can come out and say, look, this is my home ground, that is my home ground? For God's sake, I, 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 it doesn't hold water, so... There's no basis for coming out to tell them the should name their home ground when you know how the situation is. You want to ask them to start building stadiums and all that. Oh. Okay, uh, Francisca, let me ask you this quickly. <coughs> uh, in a jiffy, what happens to community partnership with some of these teams? I, 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 I once told somebody that in England, in England, as small as England is as a nation, there are over 6,000 pitches. That is in England. It cannot be compared to Nigeria. In Ghana. In Ghana, Ghana is just like Lagos. I'm trying to give circumstances why, I why we're having issues because I think the community has a key role to play in football development. Then you begin to ha ask yourself, how standardized is this community? Because the truth is, you cannot give what you don't have. Is it not a community that but, has a good stadium? But you must start or have a good stadium. But so you must start how standardized somewhere. are these communities? Okay, let me give you let me give you a quick scenario. This is very important. Uh, Ajegule as a community. They started building pitches, mini stadiums, yeah. which I think is needed, not just the government, is needed because if you have a community football based structure, it's all involving. And the NNL team, most of them came up from the community structure. I, I, I am a little bit confused because the issue remains you asking me to name a home ground when there is no pitch, <laughs> even for secondary school in Tahar Sport. It becomes very funny. <laughs> Come very funny. All right, let's move on. Um, we know we'll get there. It's just a question of time. But how time? How many? Uh, how much time do we still need to tell the world we're very serious when it comes to uh, the business of football? Um, it's quite obvious that football is one of the exclusion from the participatory sports that will be coming up. It's been said that contact sports won't take off for now. A lot of people think the NFL has just been talking, just for talking sake. The toothless bulldog. Do you really think so, Joel? Well, yes, <laughs> I must confess, yes, toothless bulldog, that's the word. There's no other, you know, um, I guess you qualify them because it's so funny. 
how many cases of corona do we have? If we look at our countries that are, I mean, the, the death rate is so high, football has resumed. They, they were forgetting they have, I mean, there's anything like, you know, uh, coronavirus, for God's sake. So I, I wonder why the FA keep postponing this thing and they're not even giving any, any tangible reason. So why are you delaying? What is going on? They should come out and tell us exactly what, what the problem is. I don't know. We, 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 we're going to keep going in circles. Too. Francisca, do you have a very view from what Joel has said? Because for me, I, I just want to be calm. Uh, I understand. I said the truth is, uh, it's not as if at this point in time I want to get a stand for uh, Nigerian Football Federation. But the truth is, do not forget that um, the Federation is under a ministry. This ministry is under a particular government. So if the government are saying, I think the whole thing just boils down, boils down to the government. The government, government are yet to open up a lot of um, um, things. Even economy, education, and we, we can go on and on to mention. I don't think it's the case of the Nigerian Football Federation this time around until the government and also the presidential tax force, that is the PTF, they come out to say, oh, we are ready to do business. We are ready to go back to our usual activities. Then if the NFF are not turning up, then we can begin to say, oh, they are toothless and bulldozed. But now, as we speak currently, definitely they will be hiding under the, 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 show, um, the, the show of the fact that, oh, nothing is really happening in Nigeria. So at this point, I don't think I want to fault them for anything. All right, very views. But if you ask me, I think uh, the NFF has a key role because a blueprint to what football should look like should come from them and they should follow a suit. Well, it's partners in progress who will be telling what's really happening in football in this country and we'll bring them to you. We want to go on this quick break. When we come back, we'll be looking at the issues as it's happening right there in Delta State. We've had the one of um, Anambra State. We've had one uh, somewhere in the north right now. It is the Delta State. And the normalization committee has been put in place to conduct an election, which to a lot of people believes that is against the ethics and norms of the FIFA statute. When we come back, we'll be expecting the call of the Delta Football Association Chairman, Edema Fuluju. We'll be back. <laughs>